Hi everyone, Tim here. So Give Energy recently released a firmware update for their Gen 2 hybrid inverters. Let's go take a look and see what's changed. Okay, so this is the Give Energy web portal where you can see all of the data relating to your inverter and your batteries and all that stuff. And uh, what I did when I um, went to update my firmware was I went to the My Inverter tab here and I went up to Software and there was a button here that said update firm, uh, firmware for the inverter and you can see I've done that already and uh, I'm now on 0 0.909 uh, I can't remember what it was before because I didn't make uh, a note of it um, but that's what I am now um, and uh, whatever it was before was whatever it was before uh, so yeah um, the process took about 10 minutes um, all that happened was the inverter um, indicator light started flashing a little bit. I'll, I took a, a few seconds of, uh, of footage of that, so I'll, I'll chuck that up, up on the screen now. Um, and it just did that for a few minutes um, before restarting, and um, everything seemed to work fine from then. I have heard of a couple of people who had a bit of trouble with um, with the update, um, but it was easily fixed by with a call to Give Energy, who sent them the firmware, and they were able to update it manually through a, a USB stick. So if it does go wrong, don't worry. Um, just get in touch with with give energy and they should be able to help you out but i had no problems it was very very trivial only took about 10 minutes so uh, that was fine and um so a few interesting things have changed with the behavior so let me run through those uh, with you now so i'm back here on the dashboard and i'm going to show you what happened in june i'm going to take a sample day uh 10th of june i think was a decent one um so this is how my uh, battery and inverter system behaved prior to the firmware update and uh, you can see i've got um, generation during the day here. I'm force exporting during the flux peak period from uh, about 5 p.m. until 7 p.m. in this period here and then overnight I'm charging the battery and I'm also heating my hot water and charging the EV. These two spikes here, this one and this one, is actually the dishwasher going on overnight. Um, but you can see there's a, a, a fair bit of stuff happening um, at this sort of time here. So from about, what's that, that's about uh, four o'clock until about five o'clock you can see the state of charge of the battery starts wibbling up and down so let's move the cursor out of the way you can see um, uh, you can see that uh, state of charge going from um, what is that it's about 78% uh, up to 80 and then back down to 78 79 back up to 80 back down to 79 back up to seven, uh, to 80 and uh, that sort of thing so um, what was happening basically is I had set my uh, battery to charge up to 80% overnight and I'll explain why I do that or why I did that uh, in a separate video so uh, please don't ask me about that in the comments I've got I've had loads of people ask me so I'm going to do a whole separate video about that so so hold on for that one uh, I'm sure you'll be interested to hear about that one um, but the uh, one of the reasons I'm doing that was to try and prevent the battery from uh, discharging into the hot water and the EV when I'm charging it overnight um, because you'd get this pattern of the battery would charge up to to the set point but then it would start discharging into the EV or the hot water or whatever happened to be running at the time so then it would have to charge back up again and then it would discharge again back down to 78 79 back into the hot water or the, the EV and then it would charge back up to 80 and so on and so on and it would keep doing this cycling until the end of the period end of the charge period that I had set which is um, 2 till 5 overnight which is the flux off peak period um, so one of the things that's changed in the firmware update is that it no longer does that. Now I'm very pleased about this. I'm going to show you what it looks like now. So I'm going to go to yesterday's data. So this is um, a similar sort of situation now that you know I'm doing the doing the usual discharging overnight and then charging again. Um, sorry, discharging uh, during the peak um, period from uh, from about five until seven in the evening, and then I'm charging again overnight but I'm only charging up to about 55% now. And the reason I can do that is because now what happens, now if you see as I move the cursor, it started at about 43% and then charged for an hour or so up to up to 55%, which was what I set it to. And then it stays there. Now you can see there's a peak here where um, that's a, a little bit of hot water heating. And then again, another peak here, which is again, the hot water coming on for a few minutes later on. But you can see it doesn't discharge from the battery. It only draws from the grid. You can see the battery power there is basically zero. It's almost no, almost nothing, and it stays that way all the way until five o'clock, which was the end of the period that I defined for the overnight charging, and then the battery kicks in and starts discharging to help support the house load, basically, which is very low overnight, obviously, until the sun rises and starts charging the battery again. So this is exactly the way I thought it should have worked right from the beginning. 
it shouldn't have ever discharged uh, below where you set it during the period of um, your overnight charging. And now it doesn't. That's perfect. This is exactly what I want it to do. So once it hits the, uh, the charge level, it no longer drops below that level for the period that you define. So this is, this is perfect. It means that I'm able to set the battery charge level to a lot lower than I was before, and I, and I don't have to worry about it then discharging into the, into the hot water or to the, uh, into the EV. So that's, that's great. It means that I can use more excess solar to top up the battery during the day, which, as you can see, is doing um, all the way through the day up until where it was there. It reached 100% at about quarter to two, which is great. Uh, because the one thing I do want to ensure is that I've got a full battery ready to discharge uh, at the uh, the peak time. Uh, so that's cool. That's a that's a brilliant uh, change to the behaviour of the uh, of the inverter. So that's 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 perfect. There's one other change I want to show you. So uh, let me switch back to my example day in June. So something that the uh, that the system used to do before, the battery would charge up to 100%, as you can see here during this period, and then randomly it would occasionally drop down to 78, 79, uh, sorry, uh, 97 or 98 percent, just randomly for, for no particular reason, at some point during the day, and then it would sort of stay at around about that level, even though there's plenty of solar that could have topped it back up to 100, it would just stay at about eight, 70, um, eight, I don't know, I keep saying 70, uh, it keeps dropping down to about um, 90, 98 or 97 percent, and I've no idea why it did that, but now, it no longer does that. It stay. It gets up to 100% and basically stays there. There's this little weird blip here, but you can see it goes back up to 100 using excess solar. So now it it more or less stays at 100% once it's reached 100%, and as long as there's excess solar, it will stay at 100%. So uh, so that's uh, that's good as well. It means you get gain those extra couple of percent back. Um, not that it's a huge deal, but you know it's an, it's nice to uh, to get that the, the, to be able to use those last two percent of your battery um, uh, in the evening as as you uh, as and when you need it when the sun goes down. So that's really good as well. So those are the sort of two main interesting things that I uh, have observed with the way the systems have been running recently. But there's a couple of other ones that I'd like to describe as well. Um, so let me go back to my um, example day in June. Uh, so obviously I'm using the peak uh, flux period to discharge the battery so that um, I can obviously help support the grid and gain a little bit of revenue from doing that. And you can see if I hover over this, um, you can see that the battery power is about 3.8 kilowatts uh, discharging to the grid. So um, the actual set point is 3.6 kilowatts. So I'm assuming those couple of hundred watts above that is actually just the, the losses in converting from DC to AC when you're um, when you're doing that export. So um, I expect 3.6 kilowatts is going to the grid, but 3.8 kilowatts is coming from the battery. Um, so that's that's all fine and well. Um, but in the recent changes, um, if I look at uh, yesterday's data and hover over, you can see that the battery power is now showing at closer to 4 kilowatts. So that's really interesting. It's gone up by a couple of hundred watts. Um, I'm not sure if, um, if that was deliberate. I'm sure it's uh, part of the plan. Um, but um, yeah, gaining a couple of a couple of hundred extra watts for for force discharging, I'm not going to complain about that. Um, one thing that I have noticed is that when um, just supporting house load, that doesn't appear to have changed at all. That's remained roughly where it was before. Um, so um, I'm not sure why you can gain a couple of hundred extra watts during the force discharge, but not for um, you know supporting the house load. Uh, maybe I'm doing something wrong in the settings, but um, that seems to be the way it's working for me. If you found different, please let me know. And uh, if I'm able to uh, eke out a few extra um, couple of hundred watts for supporting the house, that would be uh, so much so much the better. Um, but uh, the other thing that hasn't changed is the charge rate um, when I'm charging overnight. So uh, charging overnight, um, I'm able to uh, charge at about 3.45 kilowatts, something like that, and that's basically the same. That hasn't changed at all. Um, that's something I would like to see increased if it's if it's possible. I'm assuming there's hardware limits, but um, if they're able to increase the discharge rate, then um, maybe it's possible that in the future we could see an increase in the charge rate. I don't know. I'm going to ask them when I go and uh, have a chat with them at some point in the in the future. Um, but uh, yeah, that would be really helpful for me, particularly over the winter when I'm uh, using my batteries to support my my uh, air-to-air heat pump system for, for the heating. Being able to charge the batteries a little bit more overnight, that would be really useful. But um, for, the, for now, it seems that that hasn't really changed. So the other thing I'd like to show you is the uh, the My Inverter page, 
with all of the um, uh, remote control settings. Uh, so this is where you can sort of fiddle with um, sort of the behind the scenes stuff, as it were, the stuff that you don't typically just you don't change through the uh, through the app, for example. And there's a bunch of stuff on here that apparently has has been added. I can't remember exactly what was on here before, but the one thing I did notice is this battery discharge power percentage is now at 126 percent. Now, possibly this is what's what's changed and has is now allowing the um, the force discharge to run at four kilowatts instead of 3.8 kilowatts. But 126 percent of 3.6 kilowatts is actually closer to four and a half kilowatts. So. Quite why I'm getting four kilowatts and not four and a half kilowatts, I don't know. Um, if anyone knows, please let me know. But yeah, I found that was that was uh, an interesting number there that I don't fully understand. Um, but it, um, I can't remember if that was there before or not before I did the update. I didn't take a screenshot of the settings before I did the update, so I can't tell you uh, what was there before or, or not. Um, but yeah, there's um, there's this other thing. I don't know whether this was there be there before. Load first, battery first, or grid first for the export power priority. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. I can't remember. Um, the EPS, I think that was there before. Not really sure. The rest of this stuff, I think, was all there before. If you know different, um, then please let me know. If there's something new here that wasn't there before, let me know. Uh, I'll be interested to um, to understand what's changed um, in all of those settings. But otherwise, um, yeah, I think more or less the rest of the stuff is, is as it was before. So if I go to the settings, all of this stuff is pretty much as before. This is all the stuff you can basically change using the app. It's called slightly different things on the app. Um, but more or less, this maps one to one to the to the settings in the app. So, um, uh, so I don't think that's changed. Uh, in particular, um, if I go to um, the time to charge, uh, charge up to fifty five percent. Yeah, that's the same. And the charge power is three point six kilowatts, and the discharge power is three point six kilowatts. Even though the discharge power seems to be four kilowatts during the uh, the forced export, um, don't it doesn't seem possible to change this beyond that so I'm um, not sure if that's uh, if that's got anything to do with why the um, the house load can't go above 3.6 kilowatts again if you know any different please let me know um, but yeah that's just uh, what I've experienced over the last week or so fiddling with the, the settings and changing the uh, changing the behavior slightly um, it's enabled me to um, to drop the amount I charge overnight to because I no longer am worried about the, the battery discharging into the hot water or the EV so that's cool so yeah overall I'm pretty pleased with uh, with those changes uh, let me know if you've um, done the update if it how it went if it it went well for you or if you had problems and uh, if you found anything new that I haven't found please let me know because I'm sure other people would be interested to hear about that as well and uh, if you find something that I've not found then I can let other people know as well uh, in the comments so so that'll be super useful so there you go just a quick update from me today hope you found that useful uh, if you did and you're not already subscribed please uh, hit the subscribe button and I'll uh, see you in the next video thanks for watching